Wellstone Center. Um, we the were saying the neighborhood house, but I. Uh, <laughs> we are. We're not. Uh, we didn't put. We didn't put the Wellstone Center down on our invite. Day. But you know what? This is where the community is, and we're here. And I think I, I was just uh, talking to the executive director of, of this uh, of, the, of, of this community center. He said, "Rick, th thanks for uh, having the event here." And by the way. It makes a lot of great sense to have the Republicans come and visit the community. I love it. Great idea. It's a beautiful venue here. And they do a lot of great work. The history of this the neighborhood house goes back, of course, back in the immigrant days when the Jewish community arrived here in Minnesota many, many years ago. In the late 1800s. And this, uh, this, uh, this, this establishment has been part of the, the history of the uh, west side of St. Paul for that long of a time. And um, you know, as we start our program again, I think we've had we've got some good information from our, our panelists, from Nancy and, and the rest. Um, again, you know, this is uh, just the beginning of um, our outreach efforts. But I do want to um, I do want to give thanks uh, what, what thanks is due and, and I want to introduce right now our team from the RNC. Uh, again, um, Mark Jefferson is coming from uh, Madison, and that's where that's where he uh, works out of. And I uh, was able to visit with Mark yesterday, and uh, he's got some great news for us and great information. Again, you know, my partner here uh, with this event, Janet Biohopper, and um, and um, yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody said they gave you the nickname. Here comes the judge, but that must have been the election judge. Here comes the election judge. Okay, now I get it. Okay, without further ado, let's have a hand for the RNC! Well, thank you for that introduction. It's great to be here. It isn't every day that I hear applause for the RNC, but I am excited, <laughs> uh, I am excited to be here because we're taking on some new initiatives. We're correcting some mistakes that we've made as a party in past years and it's time to do things a little bit differently. So I want, wanted to talk to you a little bit today about some of the things that we're doing at the RNC before I turn it over to Janet to talk about how this translates to the state level. Uh, as a quick introduction, uh, I am from Wisconsin, um, born lifelong. Uh, I was executive director of the Republican Party of Wisconsin for four years, from 2007, uh, when things were not so good for Republicans through the 2010 cycle, uh, when we had a pretty good cycle, where we finally knocked off Russ Feingold, where we elected Scott Walker. Uh, later, my chairman, Reince Priebus, was elected uh, chairman of the RNC, and I followed him out there six months later, uh, still based in Wisconsin as a regional political director, but in that six months between when he won the RNC election and uh, I joined him in, June of 2011, we had some fireworks in our state, uh, as many of you know. And it was a, a very interesting time. And I think as Nancy had mentioned uh, in Milwaukee, one of the things that made Scott Walker so strong, uh, one of the things that made him the only governor in American history to survive a recall is his appeal to all folks. He's from Milwaukee. He's familiar with the Hispanic community. He's familiar with all of the different coalitions that Republicans need to put it all together and win. So we need to replicate that at the national level. At the RNC and as a party last time around, I don't think we did that very well. I think there was a lot of talk about replicating what we did in 2004, but we didn't replicate 2004 from an outreach perspective. We didn't engage different communities. We weren't in the Hispanic community. We weren't in the Asian communities. We weren't in the African American communities this time around. We were in 2000 and 2004. So that part of the Bush model was not replicated. Instead, we focused on phone calls until people wouldn't pick up their phones anymore. We did door, which is a good thing because it's important for that one-on-one -on -one contact, but we measured our success in how many contacts, how many phone calls we made, but we weren't winning people over. We weren't really taking our message to people, so we need to turn that around. So when November of 2012 came along and we saw uh, defeat from one end of this country to the other, 
we decided that we're going to have to do things different. Many of you have heard of the Growth and Opportunity Project that uh, Chairman Priebus commissioned, and an important part of that was engagement in uh, communities where we haven't been before. And it makes a difference. And why it matters in the Hispanic community, for example, and some people have brought this up already. The blue line represents the Republican percentage of the Hispanic vote. Many of you in the back won't be able to see this, but it goes from 2000 to 2012. Republicans got 35% of the Hispanic vote in 2000, up to 44 in 2004, and it's been downhill ever since. 31% in 2008 to 26% in 2012. Meanwhile, the red line represents the turnout. How many people voted? I've got some microphone issues. I may have to uh, use the other one. But the red line represents how many people voted. 35 million in 2000, 38 in 2004, up to 46 in 2008, and 52 million in 2012. So the population, the voting population is going up, the percentage is going down. So what are we going to do about it? We're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to communicate the GOP message to the Hispanic community. We're going to engage the Hispanic community at the local, state, and national levels. We're going to build a grassroots infrastructure. We're going to talk about jobs in the economy. These aren't new issues. These are issues that appeal across the spectrum to all types of people. We just have to communicate them. Jobs in the economy to small business owners parents about education and education opportunities, charter schools, voucher schools, educational opportunities, alternatives to failing school systems, the faith community, pastors and congregations. We need to take that message everywhere. What are we going to do? Well, we're hiring staff. Right now, we talked about the Midwest and how the Midwest is growing. <coughs> rapidly and the Hispanic population in the upper Midwest is growing rapidly. We've still got a ways to go to catch up with the Texases, the Floridas, the Arizonas, Colorados of the world, obviously. So we have staff focused in the large population states right now. Eventually we intend to get that up into the upper Midwest. Janet's going to talk a little bit about some of the things that are going on at state levels in states that don't have staff, but in states that do have RNC staff already. We're going to show up for starters. We're going to develop relationships with people on the ground. We're going to show up at events that we've been ignoring for far too long. We're going to connect the party and candidates with the communities. An example of this, we have a state director in Pennsylvania that recognized an important event in Philadelphia with tons of people that show up that our people didn't even know about. He got the governor's people involved, said show up at this event, he showed up at tons of press. And, and people loved the fact that the governor cared enough to go for the first time. I mean, this isn't, these aren't dramatically new ideas. It's about execution. It's about actually making a commitment to follow through and do it. Develop county, local leadership structure. What we're going to try and do, not just in the Hispanic community, but across America, in the target areas where we need to do well, we need to set up precinct captains. And we're going to do this a little bit with the state party in Minnesota uh, in the coming year and, and Chairman Downey and his efforts. But across America, we want to go to the smallest levels of precincts, wards, and find people in each one of those wards. And we're going to ask people to be precinct captains with the goal of canvassing your area a couple times, of finding more people to help you out in the area, and giving us intel. What are the Democrats doing in your community, and on your block, in your neighborhood? This typical, important organization stuff. We used to laugh at Barack Obama for being a community organizer, because it is no recipe for an effective presidency. But it's a pretty good recipe for winning a campaign. We need to replicate that part of it, and get people organized. And we're going to do that in Hispanic communities as well. So staff uh, that we've hired to engage in the Hispanic communities are going to be expected to do precinct build-outs as well. Get people organized locally in these communities. It doesn't matter if we lose those wards. If we're only getting 25% of the vote in that ward, so be it. Maybe we'll get 28 next time. You can't go in there thinking, oh, we're going to carry the ward or it's a complete loss. But we're going to make progress. And when this is over, our goal 
is pretty simple. Put together a list of emails, phone numbers, addresses, names of people who have shown a willingness to go to a party function, show up at a rally, make phone calls for the candidates, sign up at a booth. Any of these things that people have shown an interest in talking with Republicans and being a part of the team so that we can provide a list, something tangible to turn over to a gubernatorial nominee or a presidential nominee when the time comes and allow them to make the outreach to those people because so many times a candidate does drop in for four months or six months and that's the way the process works. But we as a party shouldn't just be four or six months. So if we can turn something over to them for them to work with, we've now produced something tangible and valuable so that these people can make inroads into these communities. So that's what we're going to have these folks doing. That's what they're going to be expected to produce. We're going to have metrics and we're going to measure results. Finally, we're going to test messages. We're going to register people. We're going to push turnout of our folks because we're integrating the engagement directors right with the political people at the RNC. On the third floor at the RNC building is the political director, uh, desk coordinators, people who get equipment out to the stage. Uh, all of the political department is on the third floor. We have the engagement staff on that same floor in that same area. They're working together. They're trying to turn people out. How are we doing? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're working hand in hand, and that's the goal here. So very quickly, the House of Representatives, uh, Republicans currently control, but we need to understand that, once again, we can't avoid uh, Hispanic communities. We can't avoid uh, African American communities. Any of the places where we've been avoiding, we can't do that any longer. We hold a 33 seat majority in the House, 17 losses then results in Nancy Pelosi as Speaker. 14 of the top 20 seats that we hold, and 15 of the top 25 battleground races across America have significant minority populations. So the House is at stake. We can't just sit here and think that we're going to win anything without engaging in these communities. So we've hired and announced a national field director and a communications director for Hispanic initiatives. We're hiring staff on the ground in target states. We've identified the target congressional districts with significant uh, Hispanic population, built comprehensive press and surrogate lists, and we're going to continue to do that. That's a never-ending process. We've increased the Republican presence in Hispanic media. Chairman Priebus has interviewed uh, with Spanish Sunday shows. We've hosted listening sessions in Austin, Miami, Denver, Los Angeles, Santa Ana, and more to come. So it's time to engage. What we're talking about here isn't a discovery of plutonium. It isn't something dramatically new. It's just a commitment to do what we all know is necessary. It's just a commitment, and it's a, a commitment to executing the plan. So, uh, and it, really, that's a, a lot of what politics is, execution not confusing motion with progress, making real progress in these communities. So with that, Janet's going to talk a little bit about what we're doing in this moment. Okay. Well, good afternoon, and thank you all for coming out. We have people from across the state of Minnesota. So this is, is this on? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, from across the state of Minnesota. Um, let me tell you, heard from um, Chairman Downey this morning that we are very serious about this commitment to reaching out to various communities. And we have agreed that we're going to work together, and I will be focusing on that as one of my objectives for, at the state level. And Mark has taken you through the RNC. What is important, one of the roles of the RNC, or at least is the way I see it, it's a representative, but it's a liaison between what's going on nationally and what's going on in our state, so that in turn we can um, get it down to our activists, wherever they may be. So I have been working <coughs> with a number of people at the RNC on various outreach projects. And so even though Minnesota is not like priority A1, we can do something, and by having this connection, what happens in other states and what works in other states can be brought in here without having to reinvent the wheel. 
what a novel concept. <laughs> they bought works from somewhere else and, and not reinvent it. And those of you who know me, I'm kind of a proponent of that line of thinking. So that level of coordination up and down the line will be good. We know, we will know what works and what doesn't work, and our goal is to use that. Now what we are going to do at the state level is we are setting up, in essence, focus groups for four major communities. And we will be, I will be literally making phone calls this week for key components in those communities. And we are going to bring them in and say, okay, what's important to you guys? What do you need to know? What do we need to know? And even it very closely tied to that is the fact that where do we have to be? Chris Fields, who's our secretary, and I have had this conversation. We find out about too many key events two days before it happens or the week afterwards. Uh, that ain't going to work anymore, right? So we need to have people that can say, OK, for the Hispanic community, this is what you do, this is when it's going to come, and this is what we suggest you do. This is not rocket science, people. This is sitting down and getting knowledgeable people in those communities saying, we need to see you here. And that is what we are going to focus on. We will also come up with ideas on semantics. I will give you a simple English semantic deal. Instead of saying something is not true, we say it's false. Why? The brain has an uncanny knack of dropping the word not. And it will hang on to the word true. So if we say, oh, Republicans are not against immigration, the not comes, the brain drops it. And the person subconsciously retains against, immigra against immigration. The statement is false. Republicans are for legal immigration or whatever other semantics we need and we will pull those words together because if we all use them the media can't twist it and those are the things that we are going to do so we're going to look at events we're going to get input and if there is legislation that would benefit a given community chairman downing has done a wonderful job of getting us to be working with our legislators and we are going to do or raise issues that need to be raised for specific communities. It's all Democrat controlled. We may not succeed this year, but when you keep putting ideas out there, you start shifting the playing field. When you start pushing back, you start shifting the playing field. So if you gain 10 yards instead of 15, it doesn't really matter. Because when you start pushing back, and those of you who push back against the DFL find out they don't like that a whole lot because they're not used to it. Well, we are taking it to them. We are going to get input from experts in these communities, knowledgeable people in these communities, and we are going to use it every way we can. That information will be disseminated to people who have come and shown up today, and then we will figure out the distribution list that we will need to get it out to the activists across the state and to all our politicians. So hopefully that we will start coming together and coordinating on semantics, on ideas, and on issues and opening the doors anywhere we can, whether it be at a local county level, whether it be a city level, whether it be congressional district level or statewide. And we start pulling together and we start opening those doors because we can pull this off. And the key word for the whole thing is opportunity. There is no place else that anybody can go on this planet that still gives them the opportunity here. The Mexicans aren't going down to Nicaragua or Guatemala or Venezuela. They're coming here. I mean, the Mexicans in the South, it's easier to go south than it is to get here. Why are they doing that? Because we are special and we are unique and we are the only party today that can keep that dream alive. Right. And we have to do it and we will do it. Amen. Thank you, Jennifer <laughs> and Janet. Listen, um, before we bring up our panel, we're uh, pleased to make an announcement today about Latino American Today.
This is a, an opportunity that uh, our company, Aguilar Productions, we were able to uh, uh, purchase a newspaper from my good friend, Adolfo Cardona. Adolfo, I believe, is here. Adolfo. And um, we looked at this as an opportunity to take on the liberal media. How do we do that? Well, we have our own newspaper. Yeah. We're not going to be them. We're not going to take them on, and we're not going to uh, um, challenge them. We're going to we're going to have them put out our own news. Latino American today is about entrepreneurship, business, education, health, opportunity. This is your newspaper. It's in Spanish, but pretty much 70% in English. And we're not saying the word Republican on it. We are using the term American. We are the only Latino newspaper, and we're trademarking, that says American, Latino American today. So I just want to let you know that this is something that uh, is unique. Uh, it's an opportunity. We, we need partners with this uh, publication. We want to grow it. We've, uh, right now we're in 120 locations distribution-wise. We want to go online. This is real business. This is, this is an ally, um, and I'm talking to a radio station tomorrow. I'm going to be meeting with a radio station tomorrow, conservative radio station. Opportunities for us. We've got to get our media out. So again, Latino America today, uh, we're very proud of the fact that uh, we're able to, uh, to bring this publication here. And this is great messaging about the things that Republicans feel passionate about. And that's education, it's business, it's our health, that's the community, and that's opportunity. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to our panel.